Hello, my name is Antonio Olivero and I work at LaGuardia Community College's Financial Aid Office. Today we'll be presenting our credit workshop which is part of our Smart Money Financial Literacy Series. Um, on the slide that you see, you will uh, note that uh, my email is here, alavero at lagcc.cuny.edu. Also, our Financial Aid Student Financial Services website is here. And then there's also the link to our money management uh, section of the LaGuardia website. Um, so you would go to our main LaGuardia website, Paying for College, and then Money Management, where you can see a copy of this presentation and other resources that are available to you. So let's get started. The credit learning objectives. Learn about the different types of credit and how to order your credit report. Learn how to establish, repair, and improve your credit. Understand your rights and learn what to look for when choosing a lender or type of credit and understand what factors make up your credit score. So here's our agenda. What is credit, types of credit, what to look for when choosing credit products. Again, how to establish, improve, and repair credit. Uh, how to order your credit report free of charge and understanding your credit report and credit score. So first, what is credit? Credit is borrowed money that you can use to purchase goods and services when you need them. You get credit from a credit grantor, like a lender or a bank or a credit union, whom you agree to pay back the amount you spend plus applicable finances, finance charges at an agreed upon time. So that's what credit is. A fantastic resource, which is uh, consumer.gov. You can go there and they have a lot of information on credit. Um, it's a fabulous website. Uh, take a look at it. Four types of credit, Re revolving credit, charge cards, service credit, and installment credit. So first, revolving credit. With revolving credit, you're given a maximum credit limit, and you can make charges up to that limit. Each month, you carry a balance or revolve the debt and make a partial or full payment. So to give you some examples, most credit cards are a form of revolving credit. Also, a home equity line of credit is revolving credit. Basically, let's say you get a credit card of $2,000, you use $500, you pay back the $500, now you get the $2,000 again to use. That's revolving credit. Charge cards. Charge cards are different. While they look like revolving credit and are used the same way, charge, charge accounts differ in that you must pay the total balance every month. So an example of that is an American Express card, okay? At least a charge card American Express card because American Express has also changed um, and offers um, a revolving credit also. But the, the, the old fashioned American Express charge card basically means that you can use that card, charge, let's say, $500, but at the end of the month, you have to pay that full $500. You can't have an outstanding charge, okay? Uh, so you must pay off your uh, charge card each month. What are some benefits to a charge card? Well, first, there's no interest charge. That's a significant ben benefit. And then second, it's a way to have um, discipline. It forces it upon you. Service credit. Many agreements with service providers are credit agreements, agreements that you will pay for each month. Not all service accounts are reported in your credit history. So examples of service credit could be your electric bill that may be reported to on, on your uh, credit report. And we'll go over what a credit report is shortly. Or a cellular phone bill that may be reported on your credit report or even gym membership. So just keep in mind that service credit can, in some cases, be reported on your credit report. Installment credit. With installment credit, a credit tour uh, lends you a specific amount of money and you agree to repay 
that money plus interest in regular installments over a fixed amount of time. And some uh, samples of installment credit are, for example, a student loan. You get money through a student loan and you get 10 years to pay it back. Or it could be a car loan where you have you you get a loan to buy a car and you have four years to pay it back. And also the traditional mortgage, a 15-year or 30-year mortgage. You get a certain amount of money to buy your home and then you have 15 or 30 years to pay it back. What to look for in a credit product? Uh, what is the interest rate on purchases? Is the interest rate fixed or variable? Is there an annual fee? How much are the late fees? When are the late fees charged? Whether you want revolving or installment credit? Are there any rewards associated with the credit? And then always look at your truth and lending disclosure. So the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, this is important. No lender can discriminate against us based upon race, color, marital status, religion, national origin, gender, age, okay? or if we're receiving public benefits. If that ever happens, you can report that lender. How to establish, improve, and repair your credit. Let's talk about that a little bit. First, there are three tips to establish, improve, or repair your credit. The first one is manage your checking and savings accounts well. And we do a workshop on banking that goes over many things about establishing and maintaining a bank account. So look out for that workshop. But it's important that you manage your bank account well. Do not overdraw your bank uh, account. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is simply pay your bills on time. Okay, and in our budgeting workshop, I go over how a budget can assist you in paying your bills on time, if not slightly early. And the third one is called a secured or guaranteed credit card. So let's talk about that a little bit. What is a secured credit card? Similar to standard credit cards, you receive a predetermined spending limit that is part of a major payment processing network like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover. Okay? You must put up a security deposit typically equal to the card's credit limit. And that's your money that you give the bank, and then they give you a secured credit card. Let's say you give them $1,000. Now you have $1,000 to charge. Deposit is placed in an escrow account and is used to secure any debts you incur on the card. If you default on this secured credit card, the issuer has this money in reserve, which can be used to settle your credit card bill. If you pay your credit card bill as agreed, your security deposit remains in the escrow account. So w before we go into the credit report, with a secured credit card, typically what happens is if you're paying your bills on time, uh, what is happening is that that secured credit card, that information that you're paying your bills on time, you're paying your credit card bill on time, is going to the credit bureau. So let's talk a little bit about credit report and credit bureaus. First, what is a credit bureau? A credit bureau is uh, an entity that receives information from banks and lenders stating the credit that you have and if you've made those payments on time. That's what a credit bureau is. A credit report includes information on where you live, how you pay your bills, and whether you been sued or have filed for bankruptcy. Nationwide credit reporting companies sell the information on your credit report to creditors, insurers, employers, and other businesses that in turn may use it to evaluate your application for credit insurance, employment, or renting a place to live. New York City recently uh, has uh, put some restrictions on using a credit report uh, for uh, employment. So that's what a credit report is. It's basically a listing of how you've paid your credit on a monthly basis. That's what a credit report is. Now, one of my favorite brochures is from the Federal Trade Commission, and I'm going to show you that brochure. Uh, oops, wrong website. Let me let me show you. Um, this is from the Federal Trade Commission, and it's called Building a Better Credit Report. A PDF of this brochure will be on our website and you can um, 
uh, download it and read it. And basically what it explains is a lot of good things, but it explains how to order your credit report uh, free of charge. Okay, so reviewing your credit report periodically. The Fair Credit Reporting Act requires each of the nationwide credit reporting companies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion to provide you with a free copy of your credit report at your request once every 12 months. So you can go to this website, annualcreditreport.com, free of charge, or you can call this phone number here and you can order your credit report from either all three or any one of the three credit bureaus. And again, they are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can see their information here. Now, one of the things that I want to point out is when you order your credit report through annualcreditreport.com, that is what's called a soft credit pull. A soft credit pull does not negatively impact your credit score. And I want to differentiate that, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about soft credit pulls and hard credit pulls. I just want to make the point that when you order it from annualcreditreport.com, it's a soft credit pull. It does not impact your credit score. So what are you looking for when you get your credit report? Well, you want to make sure that the information is accurate, complete, and up to date. Now, sometimes what happens on credit reports is the information not, may not be accurate. So what happens if there's inaccurate derogatory information? That means that it's not correct, but yet it's saying you didn't pay your bill on time. Well, in that case, you can formally dispute, okay? And then the credit bureau and the lender has 30 days to respond to your dispute to say it's accurate or it's inaccurate. And if it's inaccurate, it has to come off your credit report. What happens if you have accurate derogatory information. That means that it's correct. You may have been late on the payment. So what do you do in that case? Well, in that case, what you can do is try to understand what may have occurred in your life at that time. If you had a significant event occur in your life, for example, 9-11, or you were in the hospital, one of the things that you can do is you can submit documentation to your credit report explaining what happened during that time period. And you should always try to submit accompanying documentation uh, if you're going to uh, do that. And I'll show you in a couple of screens uh, how to do that as you order your uh, credit report. What happens if you look at your credit report and there's fraud? there's some credit that's being listed on your credit report that you know nothing about. You never applied for that credit. Well, that could be identity theft. And if you have a situation on identity theft, you have to act as quickly as possible. Uh, I will also put on the website a Federal Trade Commission brochure which explains to you what to do if you think that you have um, identity theft uh, on, on your account. So this is the annualcreditreport.com uh, website. I'm going to show you a couple of quick slides. You can see here how to request your credit report. Okay, you can do all three at once, or you can do one at a time. What some people do is they may order TransUnion in January, Equifax in May, and Experian in October. Why do they do that? Because they want to see their credit information uh, three times a year. Um, so they, they can monitor it. And the Federal Trade Commission actually uh, states that, you know, you may want to consider doing that. This is what's called identity verification. When you're going through the annual credit report website, they're gonna, they will ask you questions that typically only you will be able to answer. They're very uh, specific uh, to you. And this is a way to protect your identity. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, if you want to upload uh, some information or documentation, uh, this is a way that you can do it as part of the annualcreditreport.com website. So this is Experian and you can upload the information uh, into that site. Now there could be a fee for doing that, so be aware of it, but this is uh, an example of how you can do what we spoke about earlier. Credit score. 
credit score is different than a credit report. A credit score is a proprietary calculation based on your credit report. Credit scores are calculated from many different pieces of credit data in your credit report. This data is grouped into five categories which we will review shortly. Your credit score considers both positive and negative information in your credit report. Late payments will lower your credit score, will lower the number. The lower the number, that means that your credit score is, is uh, not as strong. The higher your credit score, that means the stronger your, uh, your credit score is. Establishing or reestablishing a good track record of making payments on time will raise your credit score. Some companies that um, calculate these credit scores are Fair Isaac and Company and Vantage Score. Here are the top five things that make up your credit report. Okay, uh, this is on the Wall Street Journal. Um, so. Number one, payment history, 35% of your credit score. If you're paying your bills on time, that's the biggest contributor to your credit score. Make sure you pay your bills on time and that will help your credit score go up. Here's one that a lot of people don't think about and that's the amount and percentage owed. That's 30% of your credit score. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit now. Basically, let's say I have, <coughs> I have three credit cards, each with a credit line of $1,000. So my total credit line between all three is 3000 So if I use 1000 out of those three credit reports, that means my credit usage, the percentage owed, is about 33%. And what um, the, the credit score companies say if you want to help your credit score, your percentage used of your total credit line should be less than 20%. Ideally, what should it be? It should be zero. You should pay all your credit off on a monthly basis and that will help your credit score the most. But if it's above 20%, you're harming your credit score. Number three, extent of years of credit. That's 15% of your credit score. So if you have a credit card and there's no annual fee, think twice about canceling it because the longer you have credit, that's helping your credit score. Diversity of credit. If you only have a credit card, or if you only have a student loan, that's not diversity of credit. So you may want to think about different types of credit that you may apply for. Diversity of credit makes up 10% of your credit score. Recent credit applications. These are hard credit pulls. So if you're constantly applying for credit, those are hard credit pulls and they lower your credit score. That's 10% of your credit score. Watch out for hard credit pulls. It doesn't mean that you're never going to apply for new credit, but if you do it too often, that could lower your credit score. Here's a slide on credit utilization rate, amount owed. Okay, so let's look at this. The percentage of amount of credit owed compared to your available credit. So let's say I have, in this example, a total line or lines of credit of $10,000. Okay, so in example one, I have one credit card with a line of credit of $2,500. The second card is $2,500 and the third card, the third credit line is $5,000. That totals $10,000. In this case, I've only used 500 on the first card, 500 on the second, and 1,000 on the line of credit. So that's 2,000 I have outstanding as compared to the 10,000. That's a credit utilization rate of 20%. That's okay. It's not damaging my credit score. But let's look to the right, example number two. Again, I have a credit card of 2,000, a credit card of 1,000, and then, uh, I'm sorry, the, I have the same amount of uh, outstanding uh, available credit which is 10,000 but on credit card 1 I've used 2,000 on credit card 2 I've used 1,000 on, on my credit line I've used 5,000 so that means out of the 10,000 I have available I've used 8,000 or 80 percent that's damaging my credit score based upon the credit utilization rate so here you have two examples of good and poor 
credit utilization. So why is this important to you? Because if your credit score is 730, the interest rate that you would pay on a car loan is 6.8%. If your credit score is 800, the interest rate that you would pay on that on a car loan is 3.24, less than half. So that's why your credit score is important. It will cost you less to borrow money. Okay, so that completes our workshop. A couple of quick things we want to point out. The City University of New York CUNY recommends that if you are going to get a financial aid refund, make sure you sign up for direct deposit. Why? Because it's safe, convenient, and fast. And you can do that on CUNY first, and you can check with the Bursar's office if you have any questions on how do you sign up for direct deposit. Next, part of the financial aid office is our LaGuardia CARES, which stands for College Access for Retention and Economic Success. LaGuardia CARES connects students from low-income families to life-changing financial resources such as public benefits, tax credits, and other essential services that remain untapped and may appear to be inaccessible. LaGuardia CARES is open the same times our Student Financial Services office is open, which is Mondays and Thursdays 9 to 7, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays 9 to 5, and you can see their phone number or the email if you're looking to reach LaGuardia Cares. So those, uh, that is our workshop. Um, I also want to very briefly show you the consumer.gov website that is excellent. You should visit it. It has a lot of information on credit, uh, what, what it is, what to know, what to do. It's a great uh, website. So that concludes our credit workshop. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day.